Everybody knows the price of real estate has gone up, interest rates have been high, and with it, foreclosures have been on the rise. And if you're following my channel and a subscriber, you know that we talk a lot about finding really good deals to help you become a very successful investor. Well, right now with where foreclosures are at in the market, it's a great time for you to strike. So today I'm gonna to share with you four steps that I use for finding really amazing foreclosure deals and everything that you need to know so you can start making money and building that financial future. Last year, foreclosures were up 30%. And right now, that means banks are just starting the process of how do we liquidate these? How do we put these into the marketplace? And I'm going to tell you, having done thousands of foreclosure deals, that they can be an absolute pain in the butt. They can look really enticing and be absolute nightmares. But if you know what you're doing and you do it the right way, you can absolutely crush it as a real estate investor. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the four steps that I use when doing foreclosure deals so I can show you how to make bank. The second house that I ever bought was a foreclosure. And over time, I ended up making well over $100,000 on that one deal. And the reason why I made so much money on this very entry level single family home was because it was a foreclosure. Let's talk about what a foreclosure is. A foreclosed home is a property that has been repossessed by the bank or a mortgage lender after the homeowner has failed to make mortgage payments. So quite simply, someone got a mortgage on a house and then for some reason they couldn't keep making their payments and the bank's like, oh no, technically we own this asset. They're not making payments on it. We got to either sell this, we got to get rid of this, or we got to get someone else that can make the payments. So banks panic big time when someone stops making their payments on a house and what they want to do is they want to reclaim that property and they want to get it off their books. Which begs the question, why don't banks like foreclosed properties? Well, it's more than just a failed asset. Banks use something called fractional lending. Once they're backed by the Federal Reserve, they have the ability to lend 100 to 1 on the money that they have in their bank. Which means by that same token that when they have a bad debt like a foreclosure on their books, it's now hurting them 100 to 1. It's in their best interest to get rid of it as fast as possible. Now here's the crazy part. Foreclosures function differently state by state. In some states, banks can get you out of your house really fast and repossess the home. In other states, it's not a matter of months, it's a matter of sometimes years. This makes banks all sorts of frazzled. Bottom line, foreclosures hurt banks, and as a result, they're pretty desperate to get them off their books, which is why they're willing to sell the house at a massive reduced discount. Much like the second property that I bought, I bought it just under $150,000. Years later, I sold it for $280,000. At the time, I bought it for $80,000 below the market. And even back then, I asked my mentor, why is the bank selling this home that, yeah, it needs new carpet and paint, but why would they list it for $80,000 less than the home is worth if it were in good repair? You know what my mentor said? He said, banks love lending on real estate. They do not love investing in real estate, which means once an asset, a house is no longer performing, it's hurting their books. It's hurting their fractional lending. It's in their best interest to sell it even at a crazy discount because even though you and I can't fathom why they would take an $80,000 loss, the reality is that home is actually hurting their lending potentially by millions of dollars because of the fractional lending system, which is why they're willing to sell it at a huge discount. Now, before I can show you the four steps of how to make money on foreclosures, I wanna help you get familiar with three different terms that you're gonna hear. The first one is called a short sale. The second one is called a foreclosure. And the third one is called an REO or a real estate owned listing. All right, first let's talk about short sales. So you have a homeowner with a mortgage that's living in the house and they're behind on their payments. The bank is not allowed to foreclose and repossess the home unless they miss a certain number of payments. So sometimes what that homeowner will do is say, I'm gonna do what's called a short sale. I'm gonna get a realtor and I'm basically gonna list this house at a discount that I hope the bank will accept. After all, I don't want a foreclosure on my record. It's gonna sit there for seven years and in some cases, 10 years. So what they wanna do is they wanna basically throw a low price on the house, see if they can get 50 or 100 offers on it. And then they hope that the agent will bring it to the bank and say, hey, the people that own this home, they're in foreclosure, you know this. But look at all the other people that are willing to buy this house. They're hoping that if the bank will approve someone else buying the house at a discount, the bank will save time because they don't have to go through the foreclosure process and it's not gonna mess up their fractional lending as much. And the homeowner gets off scot-free without having a foreclosure on their credit. So from time to time, you're gonna see the listing of a house as a short sale. Now, short sale looks like a good deal, but I wanna tell you the reality. The bank hasn't approved the listing price. So if the house is worth $300,000 and all of a sudden they're like, we're going to short sale it for $200,000. That doesn't mean that 
$200,000 is what the bank is willing to take. That could be what the bank is willing to take, but the reality is the bank wants to get a bunch of serious offers, they're gonna evaluate the numbers, they're gonna pick the highest bid, and they may go with it. So you do need to understand that short sale means competition. Now when you see a listing that says the term foreclosure, that means that the bank has repossessed the home and there's a period of time that they have to get it off the books that will be most advantageous for them before it now becomes an asset that they have to hold on to. So while it's a foreclosure, the bank is basically saying, hey, we're actually really motivated to get rid of this and we're hoping we can drop it to a reasonable enough price that someone's going to take it off our hands. But the third term is called an REO listing, real estate owned. This is where the bank basically failed the foreclosure process. No one came along. The price was too high for some reason. They couldn't get someone to buy the foreclosure. Now it's sitting as a non-performing asset on their books and banks hate REOs. So if you ever see an REO listing, that means that once upon a time, someone tried to do a short sale, the previous owners, that failed. Then it went to foreclosure and for some reason, the bank couldn't accept any of the offers that the market brought to them. Now it's sitting as a non-performing asset as an REO listing. And if you see one of those, often you can swing a really insane deal because it means that the bank has held onto the house for a really long period of time. And they're like, oh my gosh, this thing is costing us millions of dollars. Someone please take this house. Now here's the crazy thing. When it comes to foreclosures, there are two camps. There's a group of people that are like, oh my gosh, idiots who wouldn't buy this house. It's gotta be a really good deal. And you got another camp that are like, dude, foreclosure, that just smells like problems and repairs and it was probably a meth house. And dude, someone didn't make their payments when they lived there, so the house has got to have problems. I'm gonna tell you right now that the consumers are really concerned about foreclosures because they're trying to buy likely a house for themselves and while they might want a discount, the idea of, of fixing it up or doing repairs, that just turns a ton of people off. But for you and I as the investor, when you hear the word foreclosure, I want you to get excited tentatively. It means that there might be a really good deal there. Why tentatively? Because there's definitely gonna be some competition. How I win the foreclosure game, you gotta be wicked fast. In other words, if a house just hit the market yesterday, for example, that second house that I already told you about, when I went to go see it, that foreclosure listing happened that morning. I made an offer that afternoon. I got an acceptance the very next morning. That house was mine. How did I win? I was fast. Okay, Chris Crone, share the four steps. Like, what's your formula? How do you do this? The fifth house that I bought was a short sale. And I remember when my realtor found me this house, it was marked about $50,000 below what it was worth. It did need some basic repairs and I made an offer on it. And I remember the realtor said, hey Chris, just to let you know, like only 2% of offers of short sales will actually ever get accepted by the bank. This one's been sitting for like four months. They're almost in the foreclosure process. And basically they've received offers for several months. And so, so my realtor told me, don't get too excited because we're just gonna be another offer. But I ended up buying that house and I wanna tell you why. I made my offer on that short sale right before the bank went into foreclosure and my offer was at the very top of the list. That meant that they disregarded most of the other offers and it was a game of timing as is often the case with the short sale. And so because I had my offer at that right time, the bank looked at it, they accepted my offer and that became another sweet deal for me. All right, let's jump into these four steps for doing foreclosures. And the first one is you gotta find someone to identify the foreclosure. When a bank lists a foreclosure, that means that it's actually going to market and the people who stare at the market all day long, ding, 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 realtors. Real estate agents are the people, they've got licenses and they can look at the MLS in your area and basically, if you're an investor looking for good deals, you wanna have a handful of realtors that you're super tight with and that specialize working with investors that basically know that you expect a discount. And a foreclosure is a great way to get one. And since I already showed you that the secret is being wicked fast, I want to have realtors that will just take five minutes every day, log in and just say, did something shift or change in the market or did a foreclosure hit? And if one did, that agent is going to be a great resource for helping you find a deal. Now you might be curious, Chris, how do I find a realtor that's willing to work with investors? Well, it's a little bit of an interview process. So don't work with the realtor that is your cousin, your brother, your aunt, or your spouse. Like, you gotta understand that most realtors, they specialize in literally just listing everyday consumer product properties, or they're going to help you find a home that you wanna live in for you and your family. Which means that there's only a very small subset of realtors that specialize working with investors. They're not always the easiest to find because they'll disguise themselves with words like, yeah, I work with investors, why wouldn't you believe that? And then when you tell me you want a discount, they're like, oh, that's not even possible. Literally, it's just a marketing ploy for many of them. But if you will go online and headhunt 
10 realtors. Go to your local investment association. Go online. Find the realtors that say, I consistently find really good discounted properties. And if you find 10 of those and call them up and talk with them and say, I'm an investor and I'm looking for discounts on properties, one or two out of the 10 will probably actually be able to fulfill on that for you. Don't be discouraged if some of them pose as working with investors, but the, at the end of the day, they're really just trying to push consumer grade product. Now, a couple of benefits of working with the right realtor, they have market knowledge, which is super useful for you. They're gonna help play the middle person when it comes to negotiating the deal between you and the bank, or frankly, on any investment deal that you're looking at. And then also, if they're familiar that you're an investor, you know that you're gonna wanna look at the property, you're gonna wanna get an inspection on it, you're gonna wanna figure out the ARV, the after repair value. In other words, I'm gonna have to put some money into this, and if you're working with a realtor that gets really the numbers game for the investor, it means that they can better represent you and help you actually crunch the numbers. So step one is finding the realtor that's gonna help identify really good discounted properties for you. The second step then is for you to do some research on that property. And research is a couple of things. Number one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that a title search is being done by the bank or anyone so that when you get the property, it's free and clear. It, it is free of any old encumbrances, meaning liens, mechanics liens. And listen, if someone was defaulting on making their payments on the house, then they were probably defaulting on car payments and phone payments and sometimes that other bad debt comes to follow them and say, well, I see you got a house. I'm gonna file a lien against your house so you won't be able to sell it or do anything until you also pay me the money that you owe me. Bottom line, a title company will make sure that it is free and clear when you buy it, that no one else can come and say, ooh, 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 I have an entitlement on that property. Someone owes me something. I should be owed some of the equity or money that is in that property. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to do a property inspection. You're gonna to wanna to really figure out what does this home need? If it's a foreclosure, it may have some deferred maintenance, like is there a leaky roof or do the carpets need to be replaced? And a lot of that you can see with your eyes, but if you also get an inspection, I feel like it's always a good idea to spend a few hundred bucks having an inspector come out because they're not just looking at the things that you can see with your eyes, they're also getting a chance to see some of the things that you don't really think about or you don't really know about, like firing up the furnace and asking, is it actually working or is it broken? If you don't figure that one out, that can cost you a couple thousand dollars right after you buy the house and find out, shoot, the furnace doesn't work. Or they might go up into the attic, something you're not willing to do, and find out that there's some soft spots in the roof and that it had been leaking and that maybe the repairs weren't that great. And what this does is this just begins preparing you for just understanding what you're walking into. You also need to research the neighborhood. Like, depending on your strategy on where you wanna buy your real estate and the kind of tenants that you want to attract if you're gonna hold on to it, or if you're gonna flip it, then you wanna understand how long are homes like this on the market for? Like you might find out, shoot, like they sit for about 90 days before they sell. I'm glad I know that. I'm gonna have some carrying costs. Like I'm gonna have some payments that I'm gonna to have to make. And it sounds like it might take three months, but I might wanna be prepared for six or seven because things don't always work according to average. Sometimes things go faster and sometimes they go slower. And you might also have to research a few more things like what are your financing options if you buy the property? What is your payment gonna be for as long as you're gonna hold it, whether you're gonna flip it or sell it, whether you're gonna flip it or hold it, or is this foreclosure or do you need to buy this foreclosure from the auction steps? Or is this foreclosure going through an auction process? Friday morning, 10 a.m., this house is going to be sold to the highest bidder on the county court steps. Those are all the things that you wanna look into when deciding, hey, okay, my agent found this foreclosure, now let's do some research to make sure I understand this product. Step number three is really important, and I would say it's where a lot of new investors really screw up. You're going to have to look at the repairs on the property to figure out the ARV, the after repair value. For example, let's say that you can buy a property for $200,000 that is worth $280,000. Well, $280,000 is what it's worth if it's fixed up. What are you going to have to do to get it to a fixed up condition? That's what the after repair value is. The current value, what someone is willing to pay on this foreclosure, that's $200,000. But if I fix it up, what would someone be willing to pay that after repair value? That after repair value is likely gonna be based on comps, meaning market comparables like, well, in the last six months, we've had seven properties in great condition sell and all of them sold for right around $300,000. So what am I gonna to have to do to get the value up to $300,000? Turns out I'm gonna to need to put in $15,000 worth of carpet, paint, redo parts of the kitchen. And if you're not accurate on your after repair value, you're going to get in trouble. So if you're not really familiar with what it costs to repair things, you might be off. And yes, it does happen to investors. You're like, oh, I think those will cost 15,000 to repair. And it costs $30,000 to repair. Sometimes investors go in and they weren't familiar with all the things that needed to be fixed. 
And sometimes they put too much money into the property. Like in that neighborhood, no one has granite in the kitchen. And then the new investor got a little excited and thought, well, if I'm redoing the kitchen, I should do it the way I would want my kitchen to look ideally. And then they drop a freaking $30,000 kitchen in what should otherwise be like Formica and linoleum. So online SoFi provided some information on what average costs tend to be when buying a foreclosed property. They said, for example, average roof repairs, $870, electrical repairs, $1,300, plumbing repairs, $1,500, HVAC, $1,000, foundation repairs, $4,500. Now those are just averages, but you really should go in with a contractor or someone that really knows the current market prices of what it costs to hire people to come in and fix things. You also want to make sure that you vet who's going to be doing the repairs because it might be a handyman that is doing really bad work, or it might be someone that's charging you an arm and a leg because they've got lots of other work and they're a buddy of yours. And you're like, that just must be the going price. There's a sweet spot right in the middle where really you're just trying to make sure that things are repaired to the level of what's normal for houses in the area. And then of course you wanna get a really good deal on those repairs. The fourth step is to make offers that make money. And I can't stress this one enough. You need to crunch the numbers. You need to know that if you put an offer on this property for $200,000, the bank might counter and go back and forth. And let's just say it's $20,000 of repairs. If you can get it for 200,000 and your repairs are 20,000 and then you have some closing costs that you might need to factor in, you might be all in at $230,000. If the house is worth $230,000 fixed up, you just did the dumbest investment a person could ever make. You didn't get a deal. You bought a house at a discount used every penny to get it fixed up just to bring it up to market and then there was no equity left over. Here's what would be better. I bought it for 200,000. I put money and repairs in it of 30,000. So now I'm into it 230,000, but now it's worth 280,000 or $310,000. And I have a spread because the difference between 230 and 300 is a $70,000 discount. If you bought that house for $300,000 and made payments for like 12 years, you probably would have gotten it paid down $70,000. So you just skipped like over a decade of paying that house down just because you were smart enough to get a discount because you were smart enough to crunch the numbers to make offers that make money. According to Zillow, the median discount on a foreclosure is 7.7%. And I wouldn't buy real estate at just a 7.7% discount. I would be looking for a 15 or a 20% discount or even more. So when they say that the average discount is 7%, let's just say, that does mean that some people are getting only a 3% discount and some people occasionally are getting a 30% discount. So if you wanna make money in real estate, you have to have standards. For me, I usually like to buy real estate at a foreclosure level with a 20% discount after I finish all of my repairs. If I do that, I'm usually shaving a decade off of paying off that mortgage because for me, I like to actually hold onto a lot of my real estate, rent it out, and then compound it and grow it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with people you know, but more importantly, if you are ready to dive into the game, if you're ready to become an investor, if you're ready to get going, you fall into one of two camps. Either you're like, Chris, I'm gonna have to literally study and read books and get a license and do all this stuff to feel comfortable enough to get into real estate and someday I'll do it on my own. Or I wanna find a successful investor that already knows how to do all the stuff that I can learn from. That second camp was how I got started in real estate. I found a mentor and I might be your mentor. I work with partners all over the world that say, Chris, I want to buy foreclosures. And by the way, all sorts of other good deals. Your team has access to 18 different strategies for finding really good discounted properties that produce a really high ROI. Can I just learn from you or even team up with you? Have you show me how to do it or even just do it for me? All of those options exist. And if you click the link below, you can learn how to mentor with me, have us partner up and actually do this together. That's gonna be your most profitable play because I've done over $2 billion worth of real estate. I've got 200 experts that help me do this every single day, all day long. If you wanna become a pro, you've gotta work with the pros. And in my space, there's no one bigger and there's no one doing it better. So if you want the very best deals, click the link below, fill out the form, connect with me and my team, and let's figure out if we're gonna build a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio together. If you like this video and you're like, Chris, can I learn how to like flip deals and make 20 grand or 50 grand or 100 grand on a house? Yeah, but there's an even easier way to do it that doesn't require any money, any credit, or any kind of license at all. It's called wholesaling. And if you wanna learn more about how I do that, click right here and let me show you.